Welcome to the Mental Exercises series. There are certain engineering problems that require calculus to solve, but in some cases, the problem only needs to be solved once. This is the case for the capacitor charging equation. You have likely seen this equation, but I thought it would be fun to derive it from the most basic grassroots with the definition of capacitance and electric current. Think of this video as mental floss to the brain. It may also help you reinforce your modesty since there was a lot accomplished before you were born. Here is the Wikipedia page for capacitance. A capacitor is simply a dielectric sandwiched between two conductive plates. The plates will have a specific area and separation between the plates. The charge on the plates will create an electric field. The capacitance C is equal to the charge Q over the voltage across it V. One farad can be described as the capacitance which stores one Coulomb charge across a potential difference of one volt. Therefore, one farad is equal to one Coulomb of charge over one volt. Here's the Wikipedia page for electric current. In the International System of Units, electric current is expressed in units of ampere, which is equivalent to one coulomb per second. The letter I is used for current, which is the charge Q over time T. As you may know from watching my other videos, I made a pledge. No math steps left behind. Let's move these equations forward and change them from static to varying values. Let's use lowercase v for the charging voltage and rearrange to solve for q. Then rewrite it to include the rate of change of q and the rate of change of the capacitor voltage. Let's bring down the equation for current and rewrite it to show the rate of change of q in time. Then we can replace dq over dt with i as a function of time. This is the fundamental equation for the changing current in a capacitor. Here's a circuit with a battery Vs and a switch that applies current to the capacitor through a resistor. We have the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. We can write Kirchhoff's voltage law as Vs equals Vr plus Vc. Then replace Vr with the current through the resistor I sub R times the resistance R. Since the resistor and capacitor are in series, current in the resistor is the same as the capacitor. So we can replace I sub R with our equation for the changing current in the capacitor. I'll rearrange this into a form that have the voltages on the left. Then integrate the capacitor voltage part from zero to an arbitrary value of Vc and integrate the right side from zero to an arbitrary value of T. Let's work with just the left hand side now. From a table of integrals, du over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Sometimes you see it written as one over u du. Here's the left hand side. We can integrate this using the u substitution method where u equals vs minus vc. Taking the derivative of both sides gives us this. Since vs is static and does not change, its derivative is zero, which gives us dvc equals minus du. Moving our left-hand equation over now, I'll change the boundaries. When vc is equal to zero, then u will be vs and integrate to vs minus vc. Then replace dvc with minus du. I'll move the minus sign to the left. From the table, the integral of 1 over u du is the natural log of the absolute value of u. I will carry over the minus sign too. Then integrate from vs to vs minus vc and substitute vs minus vc back in. Then integrate from 0 to vc and the right side from 0 to t. 
I'll move the minus sign to the right side. Integrating from zero to VC gives us this. We can then apply the logarithm quotient rule to the subtracted log terms and get this. Then e to the x of each side. Then I'll rearrange to solve for VC. And then factor out VS. And here's the capacitor charging equation. Tau, the time constant, is equal to RC. When the switch is closed, the capacitor charges as a function of time. At one time constant, the voltage across the capacitor charges to 63.2%. At five time constants, the capacitor charges to 98.2%. We could go through the calculus to derive the formula for the capacitor discharging, but it's simply the opposite with the one minus removed. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.